the contest of memorization, the bringer of tears, the least problem-solving based competition in all of the Olympiads, and quite frankly, a very good exercise in discipline, the USA Biology Olympiad. Hello everybody, I'm Karar, and today we're going to be talking about the USA Biology Olympiad, or otherwise known as USBO. I know I give USBO a hard time for being so memorization based, but gen generally it's like a decent competition if you're interested in biology. So basically how it goes down is like this. First round is a 50 question, 50 minute test, all of it's multiple choice, no penalty for guessing. And then if you're in the top 10% of that, you go to semifinals, which is basically a 120 multiple choice, a couple short answer in 120 minutes. And then, if you get top 50, you get recognized, and if you get top 20, you go to camp. Pretty simple. Since I personally have only gone past the first round, and because the second round just doesn't make any sense to me, there's no logic to it, it keeps changing, we're going to be focusing on the first round. Alright, there's basically only one thing you gotta know about the use of vote, and that is based on this fat, yellow, nonsensical, oh, this is like, heavy thing called Camp Bell's Biology Textbook. Dude, this is like a really good like dumbbell or something. See, I could just do bicep curls all day. Okay, sorry, sorry. We, we, we need to focus. So basically, the first round is purely based on this book over here. So in order to do well on the test, you basically just have to read through the whole thing. And no, that doesn't mean skipping the phylogeny section. And no, that doesn't mean ignoring ecology stuff. That means every single part of it, literally everything. And literally just reading through it once will give you enough information so that you could get a lot of the questions. Because it's a multiple choice test, it doesn't have penalty for guessing. If you can at least like recognize something, it's very likely that you're going to get it right. So whether or not you take notes is completely up to you. This is a fat textbook and taking notes take quite a long time, but if it helps you remember stuff, then yeah, probably take notes. Basically because I had nothing to do in 8th grade summer, I started reading this textbook and I basically just read a chapter a day and like just read through it. Like did not take any notes, just read through it. First pass got done pretty fast. So it was basically near the end of the summer. And then the second pass, I basically did the same thing, a chapter every day, but I took very detailed notes. And because this took a lot longer, if a chapter was longer than 20 pages, because I was lazy, I split it into two days and said, hey, that's fine. And this took a lot longer because I split it up and all that nonsense. And I finished early, like early ninth grade, like maybe like November or something. And then I started my third pass, which was basically writing questions and detailed answers. And my logic for this is so that it'd be easier for me to study off of. And it's like, forcing me to think outside the box, not just straight up like copying stuff from the book. This pass I did not finish before the test, but I was still able to make it because like the first two passes basically taught me all the basic information I needed to know. And yeah, but one thing you gotta keep in mind is that Yusubo just asked for the most obscure nonsense. Like literally on my first Yusubo, there were like two questions on the electron transfer chain. If you don't know what that is, let me find it for you. Let, let's show how nonsensical this is. Oh, okay, let's see if I can lift this to the camera. Okay, do you see that thing on what wait, wait the, Yeah, in the center see that thing there are three questions on that and you had to memorize the order of all the proteins over there Like like the two questions were literally like is cytochrome B before cytochrome C in the electron transfer chain And I'm like, how are you supposed to know this? So what I recommend is that you actually look at the diagrams and memorize all of the like Somewhat important seeming diagram before you go into the use of both. That includes like things like the steps of glycolysis, electron transfer chain, Krebs cycle, Kalman cycle. Uh, okay, that was all from respiration. There's also some important phylogeny stuff you should memorize. The other stuff is mostly conceptual, so you don't have to worry too much about the diagrams for the other stuff, but those are the important diagrams to know and make sure you know them because there's a lot of obscure questions that you can get free points on. So before semifinals came around, so basically like the open round is in February and then the semifinals is in March. Between that time, I finished up my third pass. Then after that, I just kept reviewing my questions over and over and over again. However, there might be a better way to do this because I just learned a new tool. It's beautiful. It's called Anki and it's really, really effective. It's just a flashcard app, but like it has this cool algorithm. So it basically shows you your cards when you have to know to memorize them. Let me show you. So it's basically this thing. It doesn't look too cool. It's pretty like lame looking because it's an open source thing and they're not focused on like the actual UI of it. The main focus is how effective the algorithm is. So basically what you do is you make flashcards. So you click add and then let's say I want to say mitochondria and then power out of the cell. Add. And then I close this and then it says, hey, we got one new card. So we click on the deck and then it says study now and we click study now and it shows you the front of the flashcard. 
then you click show answer and then you could say do we want it again like did i get it wrong was it like kind of hard but not too bad or was it easy for me it was easy for me it'll give me four days later because there's no point showing it to me again if it was easy for me and then if you finish studying your deck for today it'll show you this screen and you're good Every day, it'll just bring in new cards and you review them every single day. Another cool thing you can do is you can click add, and then instead of doing the basic type, there's something called a close. Click here. And basically what a close does is instead of having a front and a back, it has hidden words and not hidden words. Blech. So I could type something like, the mitochondria is as powerful as the cell. And you ask, why are you so addicted to the mitochondria? And I say, why not? It's literally what powers all this nonsense over here. Come on. And then if you want to hide something, you basically do command, Oh, I'm in a window. Control Shift C. And then it goes into this brackety thingy. You click add and let's test this out. So it'll say one new thing. Study now. And then see it's hidden. And then if we want to see what was hidden, we just click show answer. Very cool. And the reason why closes are good, I generally use closes is because they are a lot more flexible. You can use them like a flashcard like this, or you could like hide certain parts of a sentence. All right, that's basically everything you need to know about like the general studying tips. There's some specific things that you have to know more than others. So basically you have to know genetics very well. You have to know like anatomy very well. And then you have to know how plants work very well. So basically we've gone through the whole book. There's like two weeks before the competition and you're wondering, what should I study? Study genetics. Make sure you're very comfortable with. It. Memorize all your anatomy and memorize all the plant parts and plant hormones and plant functions. It's also very useful to like know the phylogeny and like memorize that because that's like the hardest to like just remember off the top of your head and a bunch of it comes up so you get like free points just by knowing your phyl phylogeny. So that basically means like chordata or like arthropoda, which came first, like what are the ancestors of that, all that good jazz. All right, very cool. That's all I got to say for you. Basically, I understand it's a memorization based contest, but a lot of the stuff you find in the Campbell book is kind of interesting, even though like the front is just flowers boring but like the actual textbook itself is cool so i mean just read through the textbook that'll be fun and then if you like happen to do well in the competition it's great ap bio is pretty good at preparing you but like it doesn't cover everything so just read up on what you didn't learn in ap bio and then you're absolutely fine all right thank you guys for watching as always if you enjoyed this video leave a like and subscribe for more if you guys want me to do any specific competitions, like make these kind of videos for other competitions, just let me know and I'll do it. And other than that, thank you guys again for watching and see you guys next time.